everybody, it's Rolly from Rolly Max Music, back with another episode of Hot Tips and Hints for uh, playing various musical instruments. So whatever your pleasure, uh, we're going to cover something, a little bit of uh, every popular musical instrument. And today, as you can see, we are covering the bass, but not just the bass guitar. We're going to be going through a lot of different bass instruments, kind of the evolution of bass instruments and um, some of the different instruments that have been used through the years to play bass and are still used today. Now, uh, before we go any further, we would like to thank the Willow Ridge Community Association for sponsoring this series of videos. Um, check out any of their social media pages to find out what's going on in the community. There's really quite a bit going on here on a daily basis. Including, um, we are located, of course, in the Willow Ridge Community Hall, and uh, we teach out of here in our fabulous studio here where this video is being shot. And we also do lessons online. Um, our phone number is there in the back, so uh, feel free to give us a shout um, if you want to go further with any of the material on any of our videos. Now, back to the base here. So, uh, there's always been a need to fill out the bottom end in music because uh, music sounds better when you get a full spectrum right from the very low notes to the very high notes. And it was discovered earlier on that, uh, you know, it, it really sounds good when you assign different instruments to different ranges. So that's why, you know, you got your high range instruments, your mid range instruments and your low range instruments like the bass. Uh, however, the instruments that are used to hold down the bottom end have changed uh, considerably uh, over the years. Um, so just uh, going back to box time, the Baroque era, your standard band, it was actually called a basso continuum, consisted of a lead instrument, a keyboard instrument, and a bass instrument. And uh, you could add other instruments, but as long as you had those three cover, you were good. So typically the lead instrument would be a trumpet or a baroque flute, what we call a recorder or a violin or something like that. And uh, the keyboard would be probably a harpsichord. And uh, the bass, the popular instruments of the day were the bassoon and the double bass, the largest instrument of the violin family. And sometimes uh, cello would be used because that still has a relatively low range, but much more portable. And then uh, through the years, um, different variations on uh, these instruments became popular. Um, in the 20th century, the guitar became a hugely popular instrument, but we had to wait half of the century before we finally got a bass instrument in the guitar family. And this is an example of the first bass instrument in the guitar family, which is the electric bass guitar. And it was invented in 1952 by Leo Fender. So the very first bass guitar was a Fender Precision bass. And so it was made to have the kind of sounds that you would expect from a double bass, but to have them loud enough that they could keep up with the current bands, which all often featured a drum kit and an electric guitar. So it's like, okay, well, electric bass, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, this particular electric bass guitar is also fretless, so it can mimic the sound of an upright bass. So, uh, you know, just to give you an example, here's a song some of you may recognize from the 80s. So you can have that fretless um, double bass type sound, but still do all the normal electric bass things. So that is, um, without a doubt, the most popular bass instrument today. However, it is just one of many. Now, this kind of instrument might look familiar. It is an acoustic bass guitar, and ironically, unlike just about any other instrument that has an acoustic and an electric version, the acoustic version was invented after the electric version. And the reason for that is actually quite obvious when we start playing it. 
it's very, very quiet because you'd have to have a huge body on it, like double bass, in order to reproduce those bass frequencies at any kind of volume. So we had to wait for this technology, which came out in the early 1980s, and that is an acoustic guitar pickup. Um, the 80s Takamine guitars, I believe, were the first ones to feature this sort of pickup that preserves the acoustic sound of the instrument but amplifies it enough so that we can actually hear it. So um, the nice thing about it is that it sounds like an acoustic instrument. So it has a nice warm tone. Um, here's a riff you might know. So it kind of has the same kind of warmth as a double bass, but it has a definite acoustic guitar type sound. And um, you can take it to the campfire as long as no guitar players are playing too terribly loud to be able to hear the bass. Now, um, another family of instruments that's it's a natural really for uh, uh, doing a bass line is the keyboard family. And uh, ever since the 1960s, uh, a lot of people still don't know this, but uh, a popular band called The Doors didn't have a bass player. They had the keyboard player play the bass with his left hand. And uh, the keyboard sounds, of course, have evolved a little bit more since then. Uh, so now we get you know, these nice big sounds like this. being a bass line. It's actually a song by the hip. You might uh, recognize it. And, uh, you know, there's all, all kinds of... Um, oh, looking for the wrong keyboard here. But uh, all kinds of things that you can do that you, you can't really do on a bass guitar just because of the range, mostly. Um, here's a song from the 80s that uh, featured a keyboard bass. Oh, the big swell on it. Really cool sound like that, and uh, that of course is uh, the intro to a Huey Lewis tune, "Walking on a Thin Line." And even like those kind of sounds are still around uh, today. You get actually there's a big revival. A lot of uh, current songs feature like a note like that. It just fills up the bottom end. Okay, so um, now we're gonna look at an instrument that you wouldn't guess would be a popular bass instrument. Well, it's actually not that popular yet, but um, it's just becoming popular now in the 21st century, and that is the bass ukulele, or the U bass. And just like the acoustic bass guitar, um, you need to have the fancy electronics to make it sound good. But this U bass, as it's called, um, has really rubbery strings, and this particular one is fretless, so it sounds a lot like um, the big upright bass, even though it's a tiny little instrument. So the advantage of this is like, well, that's very easy to carry around, and uh, for a small instrument, it's got a very big sound. Okay, so those are some of the more popular choices that you have if your uh, job in your band is to hold down the bottom end. Now here's an instrument that very few people think of when it comes to uh, choosing a bass instrument, and that's because very few people have heard of it. And you're probably scratching your head going, what is that thing? This instrument is called the Chapman Stick Touchboard Instrument, and it was invented by Emmett Chapman in California in the early 1970s. And the idea behind the stick is um, to have an instrument that you can play with the range of the piano, but it sounds more like a guitar. So we're actually using the same uh, technique as we do on the piano. Like the fingers, what they do is the same thing. See how my, my fingers haven't really changed? And 
and uh, um, the advantage of this is um, if you're doing more than just a bass line, then it has some guitar strings too. So you can play guitar and bass at the same time. some blues lead guitar and the bass is going the whole time or if you're a keyboard player then it works uh, really well like that or you can just play bass on it but the advantage is it has those low notes like a five or six string bass and like a keyboard. So I um, hope you've enjoyed uh, looking at some uh, likely and unlikely bass instruments that uh, you can use to hold down the bottom end in your group. Um, we teach all of these instruments at Rolling Max Music, uh, plus several more. Uh, if you'd like to talk to us about online lessons, or uh, sign up to come on down here to the Willow Ridge Community Center, uh, just give us a shout on our phone number here. It's kind of slid down. That's the problem with the bass frequencies, right? It vibrates everything. <laughs> but uh, we'd be happy to help you out. Um, and we'll be doing more of these videos. Uh, so uh, watch on our YouTube channel or on the Willow Ridge Community Association uh, social media sites. And uh, um, I'll just uh, put this out there. Uh, hopefully you'll get some value out of these hints and tips that we're showing you. But the problem with videos is that although you can see me, I can't see you. So uh, there's nothing uh, that can substitute for real one-on-one -on -one instruction. So give us a call, we'll set something up. Um, until next time, happy playing. And we'll see you all soon.